Uh, we'll move on to uh, Leanne Watson uh, from the uh, Canterbury Employers Chamber of Commerce. Good afternoon and thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, talk to my submission. Uh, I'm just going to set a little bit of context and I'm going to be slightly longer than the previous two presenters um, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then um, hopefully answer some questions. Uh, so overall we would like to see the council be bolder in their thinking, doing things differently and identifying and incorporating a uh, new strategic approach and new financial and delivery solutions to achieve their vision. While we do acknowledge that the council's efforts to increase engagement, we believe this could go further and we'd like to see increased collaboration, communication and resource sharing between both local and central government and business. And also between um, obviously the council and the local business community. Um, we do also understand the ongoing challenges we all face in the rebuild and the regeneration of Christchurch post-earthquakes and we appreciate that there is a delicate balance between what is best for each project and what is best for the city, as well as the need for reinvestment and the um, balance between reducing costs to ratepayers. There is an opportunity to better utilise the bespoke regeneration planning legislation in our city. We have two years remaining in which we can utilise these tools to help address our city's urban planning and development challenges and the, lead the rest of the country in our urban planning. But overarching all of this is the concern that the ongoing limited council revenue base uh, cannot enable both the repair of our city and the investment in new initiatives within effective timeframes. The Chamber's key uh, viewpoint continues to be the same as what we set out in our long-term plan submission, that it would be beneficial for the council to review their current <coughs> asset base and genuinely consider all ways to increase capital such as bringing in strategic partners and appropriate ass for appropriate assets um, or looking at mixed ownership models. We are not yet back to business as, as usual. In fact, in the fast changing environment we operate within, we may never be. So we need to make sure that central services are prioritised and that we are encouraging good, strong, robust conversations on areas that can deliver the most impact. This will be key to changing our narrative from a post-earthquake rebuild story to an example of a small but innovative, resilient and a courageous city. In particular, we'd like to see the following considered and reflected in the Council's final annual plan. Uh, firstly, a new approach to maximising revenue, attracting new investment partners, finding efficiencies in current spending to reduce Council overheads. A commitment to developing an innovative approach to managing assets and services, exploring capital release from council-owned assets and developing new procurement models. A commitment to new thinking and developing new models of service delivery that are both innovative and encourage co-investment. Increased communication and engagement with key stakeholders and the wider community on our city's aspirations. We're seeing good progress through Christchurch New Zealand on this, but ongoing communication and engagement work still needs to continue and be improved. Greater support and consideration for businesses and developers in the central city, particularly in regard to the lag between the anchor projects coming on stream. Again, we're seeing some good progress in that, but we need to make sure that that momentum continues. A stronger voice for, uh, for those who have led the regeneration and invested millions in our central city, the local business community. A stronger weighting given to those business, uh, businesses around the table and the business voice in our decision making. Clearer mandates across agency responsibilities and inter-agency collaboration and appropriate resourcing and support in particular, we'd like to see targeted attraction of <coughs> specific industries and people into our city. Again, something that has begun, but I think we need more transparencies and more granularity on what is actually happening in that space. Clearer communication around agencies' intentions to increase both domestic and international relevance and competitiveness. We mustn't lose our, our relevance in both New Zealand and internationally. And a renewed focus on attracting and retaining young professionals with many choosing to leave the region when they complete their education. And finally, increased collaboration with central government and a willingness to leverage capabilities and encourage resource sharing. As the home and voice of Canterbury Business, we appreciate the opportunity to work with the Mayor and with the Council, and we've really appreciated the ongoing um, communication and, and engagement that we've shared over the last couple of years. We have a very special uh, city. We have a very real opportunity to deliver a vibrant, prosperous and sustainable 21st central, ex uh, central experience for our businesses and our residents, comparable to other major cities around the world, as long as we put, it, the, put in uh, place the plans and the actions and the place to do this is now. 
very happy to answer any questions. Thank you. <coughs> Can I start off by acknowledging the work that you've done to support businesses in the wake of the events of the 15th of March? Um, I, I really was impressed with how quickly uh, the Chamber came to the fore and put its hand up and um, put in place the supports that people needed. It was really very much appreciated. Thank you. Um, one of your um, sub proposals or submissions is already, um, I've already been asked a question on it by the media, so I'll start with that. And that is the idea that we don't have to own all of the buildings that our services are provided from, so that we can, um, for example, uh, you use the example of Perth, and maybe I'd like to understand that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But um, do, do you know, in terms of not necessarily owning the buildings, and I'm just thinking of the example of the Linwood Library, which we have uh, inside the shopping mall, and we don't have to own the the facility. We rent the facility, um, and it is enabling of people to access. The library in the same hours that the um, that the mall is open. So, um, have you got some some sort of th concrete thoughts on that? Because yeah. I wouldn't want to raise people's expectations. And often, when the media get hold of a submission, they they read it and they think, oh, there's lots of money to be saved here. But yeah. it goes from one side of the budget to another. So, from capex to opex, and um, I think that's a significant issue too. Yeah. Look, I think um, that was one example that we, we put in the submission as a way to try and increase, um, I guess, the thought process around exploring different options. So, you know, the, the world is changing. Mm. Um, consumer patterns are changing. Uh, the needs are changing of the way in which we all operate. And I was just talking earlier to a couple of the councillors, uh, and every industry, every business is not immune to this, including the chamber and including the council. So this is about taking a good hard look at what the council's core priorities should and shouldn't be in the climate that we currently operate in, post-earthquake, but also in the changing world. And I think there are um, opportunities for the council to take a good hard look at some of the assets that, that they do own and work out whether or not they need to own them, whether or not there is a different model for that operation. So I'm not necessarily talking about um, one, hard and, ethics, yeah, one yeah. hard and fast exactly. you know, rule. This is about taking a good strategic look and, and, uh, and saying, should we operate this? Should we own it? Do we need to own 100% of it? Yeah. Um, so to get that conversation back around the table and have a genuine conversation, a really robust conversation about all of the avenues that are, that are available to them. And it may very well be that following that conversation, some of those things are ruled out. Yeah. But I just feel that that, that conversation needs should to happen. be... Should happen. Yeah, should happen. And yeah. it's interesting because, I mean, this building is jointly owned with Naitahu, so right. it's a separate company that, that we rent off and... Um, been some work being done. There's been some work being done. No, no, no. There's some work being done on that as as we speak as well. Dion. Well, actually, the um, the toilet example that I said before would, would actually work there because council doesn't need to own toilets, do we? Could partner with people people who already have them. Um, anyway, in your submission, you have mentioned a couple of things, and I just got a couple of questions here. Uh, you've the main one that I really want to cover is greater support consideration for businesses and developers in the central city. So, two things I want to ask on that point: um, Would you support further funding for the Central City Business Association, and would you? Do you support the uh, development contribution rebate support for developers in the central city for residential? Or does the chamber, I should say, not you specifically, but do you think the chamber would? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a very cruel question ask, uh, to ask me, considering Brendan and Paul are sitting right behind me. They've <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> got your back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just watch my back. Um, look, I, first and foremost, I absolutely support um, any. Uh, incentives and, or well, maybe incentives is not quite the right word, but any further support for central city businesses right here, right now, because of what I talked about right at the outset. There is a massive lag between some of the anchor projects that um, were promised many years ago, and businesses, through no fault of their, of, of their own, now find themselves in a position where they've invested millions and millions of dollars, and they have led the regeneration of our central city. Um, so we, we must continue to support those businesses. Now, that's not to say that businesses don't need to um, do things differently themselves at the same time. Mm. And I think there's some really good work um, that Christchurch NZ have started around some of the um, activations and marketing of the central city, but we, we have to do more than just throw money at marketing. We have to work out how we bring people in, um, what are the activations that will bring people into the central city. And let's be really 
really clever about those activations because at times we, we put things on in the central city that actually do the complete opposite. They draw people out of the bars and the restaurants and take them to other places um, such as you know food trucks um, or you know into, um, into Hagley Park. And I'm not against having things in Hagley Park at all but let's be clever about doing that. Let's really think about what some of the unintended, unintended consequences are of those things. Let's work with the business community to, to identify and help support them as to how they leverage off some of those things. So if we're, if we're putting money into marketing campaigns, let's make sure that the businesses actually understand how they can leverage off those things. So, so very supportive of um, supporting businesses in the central city and using um, existing networks such as the Chamber and the Central City Business Association to do just that. Um, businesses need support, there's no doubt about that. Um, your second question around the... Um, the yeah, the development contribution. Development contribution. Um, look, the same, the same things apply really. Um, we've got businesses who are prepared to invest in the central city, so we need to make it easy. We need to act as an, an enabler for those things to happen. Really like the idea of the Project 8011 um, as a good example of working in collaboration and partnership with um, with that sector to try and. Um, make it easy and actually get some projects underway. So I think if the council can act as an enabler um, and provide those sorts of um, opportunities for businesses to leverage from, then I, that's, a, that's a great thing to okay. do. Cool, thank you. And do you know anybody who has a spare couple of hundred million dollars to help fund a state or multi-purpose arena? <laughs> I'm working on it. That would be lovely. <laughs> thank you. So look, thank you very much. Um, I apologise that we've run out of time. Uh, there's a couple of other councillors had their hands up. but. Um, uh, we'll, we'll move on and, and continue the conversation. I mean, you're part of the um, development forum, Absolutely. City Focus, and um, and I think Christchurch NZ is very keen to work in a very collaborative way across the city, um, sort of really uniting all of those different um, groups that need to be involved in, in activating the central city. So thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Cheers.